Hello, everyone, and welcome to the High Vibe Tribe podcast. I'm Marcy Newman, your host, the Heart Shift Coach. And of course, I can see that you're looking at something very unusual. We have our guest today, Leanne Fortunato Hertzell. And the reason that we are doing this with the video uh, background is because Leanne is an incredible artist, but her artistry is something that comes through in her work. So we're going to be having such a really wonderful conversation today. And first, let me just welcome you, Leanne, and tell you how happy I am to be here. Oh, thank you, Marcy. I'm excited to be here with you. Thank you know, you. it's um, it's taken us a little bit of a while to get together, but I also want to share with our audience um, what I, how I was drawn to you. It actually was sort of happenstance and I came across your work on Facebook and all I saw as I was, you know, busy scrolling through was this woman standing in front of this beautiful painting. And as I, you know, kept scrolling, I went, wait a second. And I went right back to you. And it was, um, it was, this moment of like realizing how connected, how heart connected your work was. And then of course I started to read about it and I said, I have to talk to this woman. <laughs> she's, she's got something really important to share. So let me tell our audience a little bit more about you, what you do, and then we're just gonna dive in because um, I'm really interested in hearing all about you, your story and what you share with so many people, okay? Sounds great. All right. So um, Leanne, um, first off is from Pennsylvania. So Leanne, I guess it's getting a little cool there now um, as it is here outside of Boston and it's my favorite season. So, this is a time for me, I think, also when I'm having guests, um, I begin by just really coming into this energy of gratitude, which I was feeling from you right from the very beginning. So let me just start there. So what Leanne, um, how she describes herself, let's start there. She owns a multi-dimensional branding and marketing firm called The Creative One where I access higher consciousness through what I refer to as meta work. And that's M-E-T-A-W-O-R-K, where I'm tapping into my client's essence and reflecting that out into the world. I'm also an artist channeling energetic meta art that shifts the frequency in the space they inhabit and through meditating with the painting. So right away, I'm sure you're feeling that there is purpose to the work that um, Leanne does with her paintings. Her ultimate role is to help others to tap into their innate creativity and connect with their fully realized self. Very obviously multi-talented, but at the core of everything that she does, there is a quest for discovering the untapped human potential. Leanne operates Creative One, a branding and marketing firm, and she holds her, you might say she holds space for her client's essence, right? To really start to be expressed. Her groundbreaking work, which is the meta work and immersive process, um, steps a client again into this journey of full self-realization. I don't know about you, but I'm very intrigued about this. And um, let's see. She also describes her paintings as channeled portals to higher consciousness. And again, they are meant to actually shift the energy where they inhabit. This is important. So it's a very unique perspective um, about not just her art, but the purpose and of course her intention of it. 
So Leanne, um, first off, I want to draw everyone's attention to the painting behind you, which is magnificent. And if I could say it would go so perfectly behind <laughs> me. <laughs> yes, it would. <laughs> You can see we've coordinated colors. We, you know, <laughs> we, we are completely in sync here. So it's gorgeous. There's so much energy. There is so much um, I would say there are so many dimensions. I can actually feel the layers of it coming forward. This is not just um, a third dimensional uh, painting. I can feel the layers of energy, the la layers of consciousness, the layers of, of light. So tell me something. How did you get started in this? Well, yeah, where, where to start? First of all, thank you so much for inviting me here today, for, um, for just seeing me and, and seeing this work. So um, actually there's two paintings behind me and I oh. don't, yeah, and I don't usually sit this close to them. Like I wanted to create a nice backdrop, but I'm feeling the energy come off of them so strongly that I'm, as you were talking, I was like, oh, I should have like, a little bit more distance. I mean, it feels, no. it feels wonderful, but it's but, coming right through me. And and also, it's why I was experiencing them differently. Like this, the one, it must be over your left shoulder. Um, exactly. Is I love that you have paint on your wrist, by the way. No, I, I just got done painting. Hysterical. <laughs> hysterical. Um, this is like hot off the press here. So, I had a, a, a little bit of a different feeling with that one. The one on the right, they actually felt like they came at different times. And I was going to say yeah. something like that. And now you're validating it. It's so beautiful. So it, I'm sorry to interrupt. I had to share no, it. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. So explain a little bit. So yeah, the, the one, this one that I'm pointing to, ooh, right in the middle, um, that is a channeled painting of peace. Mm. So the entire time that I'm painting it, I'm just stepping into that higher awareness of peace, not questioning or processing what I believe peace is culturally or, you know, personally, just being an open channel for peace. And, and that was actually the first painting that I did. And, um, and, and then this one is actually fully realized. So it's that stepping into that space of the person fully realized, fully enlightened, right? And aware. And so what happened was I just heard a few months ago, I, I do paintings with my clients as part of the immersive process, but I heard a few months ago, just start painting. And so I just, you know, it was just heating that, that urge of, okay, I'm painting peace. And then the next one, and then the next one. So realizing that it's a series, yeah. but I had them in my room and I realized that I expected them. I fully expected them to shift the energy of the room because that's the purpose of them. So if peace is hanging in a room, it, it shifts the energy and the frequency to peace and people can feel it. And I expected that, but then I just thought, wow, you know, I'm just going to study this for, for a few minutes. And I started meditating with them and realizing that to meditate with them or gazing, which is century old method of meditation, which I call ocular meditation. Oh, cool. That it, it literally brings it into every cell in your body. So if you're meditating with peace, after just a few minutes, it doesn't take a long time because it's affecting the frequency anyways, but to have that, you know, personal human focus on it, it like you literally feel like every cell is vibrating at peace. And so I started 
handing these out to friends that were close enough to me geographically that I could. And I was like, tell me what happened. Is this the same thing happening to you? And sure enough, it's just become this amazing experience for me and, and everybody that has a chance to meditate with them. So it's now like, it just brings me so much joy. I mean, I had 15 minutes before this call and I'm working on a full size. It's the size of a door because it's, it is a doorway. Wow. Mm Because these are portals, right? Absolutely portals. Mm -hmm. So I'm working on one that's the size of a doorway. And I just thought, Oh, I I just have to do a little bit. So that's why there's pain on my hand. I love that you, I didn't really clean that up, but anyways, (laughs) no, it's so precious. I can't, (laughs) I'm so happy really. Yeah. And by the way, I have to tell our audience, we were not expecting to do this with video. <clears throat> we, um, you know, came together uh, on Zoom, obviously. And um, I had said to Leanne, let's just say hi. And then we'll turn the video off and I'll interview you <clears throat> using audio only. And then when I saw her and I gasped, it took my breath away. And I said, I can't turn my video off. So instead, here we are. So that's another reason why I love that that paint is on her wrist. It is so precious. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, that's that's the paintings, but there's um, that's just kind of the latest thing, you know, the expression that's that's coming through. What I'd really like to share is is the process that I've gone through like the last decade or so, because it's been so fascinating, you know, things just don't, we just don't arrive at a certain place, right? We're on this ongoing journey of, of expansion. And I honestly, 10 years ago would have never thought I'd be sitting here with you with, with paintings, especially paintings that have this type of effect, because I, it was not a goal. It was not on my list of things that I wanted to do. I'm an accomplished um, graphic designer and art director. I am obviously an artist by trade, but I, you know, went the commercial route with that, with marketing and advertising and, and was always something like, oh, you know, someday when I get older, I'm going to paint kind of thing, you know, but, but it really has been the past several years of just really stepping into complete surrender that has brought me to this point in my life that is more vibrant than I could have ever imagined. Mm. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but you'll have to tell us more about your journey. Like, what was it that did you go through a period of discontent with it? Or was it just that the light that was coming through you was so compelling? I will say that that the moment that I made a distinctive pivot, I mean, we're always obviously evolving, right? Right. And and I had gone through a very, um, very low point in my life with a very destructive relationship Mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of needing to get my foundation back underneath me as I was raising three children on my own. So, you know, we all have those kind of dark periods, right? And, and that went, it was several years, it was over a decade. And I woke up one day, literally saying it was the beginning of 2009. And I woke up and I said, I'm really tired of living in fear. Just tired of all of it, right? I'm tired of wondering if I'm going to have the money to pay the bills or, or, or just from every aspect. And so I, I had always been on a spiritual path and, and I was, you know, absolutely in the middle of that, but I made this personal choice to live 2009 fearlessly. So whatever came up, I was going to choose love and I was not going to choose fear and I was going to become very conscious of it. And so that year really was that pivot for me because I feel like I took a stand for myself as a, as a human being, Mm -hmm. how I was choosing to, to, to create my life moving forward. And so at the end of 2009, 
I decided that I needed to leave the, what I thought was a very safe marketing director job. It was going to, you know, have the health insurance and, and all that security. And I left it during a time where, um, very still in that very destructive relationship, no child support, kind of like people were saying things like, what are you nuts? Yeah. Right. But it was the only thing that I could do because I wasn't living in fear and I wasn't, I wasn't allowing that to trickle in, you know, and, and change my view of reality. So yeah. I started creative one and and then after a few years, it was wonderful. It was great. I mean, you know, owning your own business, you know, that there's all these challenges, right. And they're all on your shoulder. So, you know, it wasn't a cakewalk, but I became a little discontented because I felt like I was living my life in silos. Like there was this silo over here of Leanne that was very spiritual, that traveled the world working under healers and, and studying human potential, just having this amazing experience. And then there was the Leanne that owned a marketing firm, you know, and showed up in a certain way. And that was the second pivoting point. When, when I made the decision, I didn't want to live like that. Right. I wanted, I wanted, we do that. We put ourselves in these boxes and I decided that that just didn't feel right anymore. I wanted all of myself to show up in every moment of my life. So I didn't really know what that was going to mean. I, again, like just did it and I wasn't thinking, well, now this is going to happen or that's going to happen. But what did happen with that, once I made that commitment to myself was something, um, an esoteric gift that I was born with like morphed into something different. So to explain it my whole life, I've been able to help people, individuals cross over. So I was able to help them through the death process. Oh, and I didn't necessarily love the fact that I could do it because I oftentimes was, I would be dealing with things that were very painful to see in another human being's life. Right. But, but I did it because I knew And it took me years to really own it, you know, that this is okay. This is something that's very important for me to do. So I had that component that was kind of always there, but it was becoming a a bigger and bigger focus on my life. And I mean, I would literally tell my kids, don't tell your friends about this because I don't want your friends to think, oh, their mom's that crazy woman that can you know, how people cross over. Like I, I just wasn't comfortable with it myself. Right. But as I was making this decision to live fully who I was and really owning that ability, it morphed over to my business in the fact that I could literally step into that essence point of a person or an organization, because it's the same thing. You know, I'm dealing with if somebody's in the process of dying, I was working with them from the side of spirit, not past tense, I still do. But, you know, I don't need to be with them physically, I can just step into that space, right? And, and ask them, what do you require? And I work with Christ consciousness. So, Mm -hmm. so that just moved right over into business Mm -hmm. where I could step into that essence point. And so initially, it was this practice of that's just how I started to work. I didn't tell my clients that I was working in that way. But after a while, I needed to start sharing it with my clients because what was happening was, so what happens was, is when I tap into that essence point, not only do I see the branding or the marketing from that point of their purest potential, which, because we all have blinders on to whatever degree. I always say, you know, if there's individuals around a boardroom table, every person, no matter how brilliant they are, they, they only come with that educational experience, life experience, belief systems, right? And so we, we can't always see, we can pretty much never see the yeah. true potential, right? So 
So for me to be able to step into that, I'm obviously being taking direction. I always say, you know, it's, it's as if source is the mentor for the business, right? So I'm taking this guidance from the highest source. So of course, things are very successful. So in one case, there was a company that we were rebranding. We were we had their website still under construction. All the materials were still at the printer. And they called us and they said, after seven years of not being able to get this brand off the ground, nothing's even out there yet. And our phone's ringing off the hook. Like, what, like, what the heck? So at that point, realizing this needs to be shared with, with my clients. And so the company, I kept taking it to higher, uh, you know, um, levels of expressing actually what was happening. And then there's this other piece of it where I locate a company on this earth, this reality, this dimension, and I locate them in that highest essence point, which I see it as fully realized divine earth is what I call it, because it is, it is a dimension where everything and everybody on that earth is fully evolved is fully realized. And when I make those two, you know, that, that organization here, that organization there on fully realized that connection that happens, that's when this magic happens of synchronicities just, just increase. And, you know, because there's this like open, like portal, right. To to each other. So started expressing that more and more to clients. And, and it's always starts with what I call the meta work, which is going into that essence, kind of giving them a report. So it's a written form of everything that I experienced there. And, and that was great. I mean, you know, I, I, that was a number of years that that was happening, Mm -hmm. but I, I did feel that there was something more and that, and I had this anxiousness that I wasn't getting to that something more. And so I did have, when you say like, did something happen, you know, that really shifted. I had a day, remember it so clearly. I was out, I was walking my daughter's little toy poodle <laughs> and I turned the corner, the development I was in. And all of a sudden I was really mad, like this really frustrated anger. And I had no idea what it was connected to because I wasn't mad about anything. (laughs) So it took me a few days of just kind of really sitting with it and feeling it and meditating about it. And, and, and it kind of shifted, you know, from more frustration to just pure anger. And I finally, and it was, there's a full moon and it was lovely couple days, but, but I got to the point that I went into that space that I go into on behalf of individuals, right? So it's, it's me and it's Christ consciousness. And I just said, I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm just like releasing. Yeah. I'm just, I, I've been open. I've been doing everything as mindfully as possible. So I I just kind of threw in the towel and, and I, I was given this little mini life review. I was shown every aspect of my life. My, um, I had sold my home. I had moved in with a, a wonderful man and was engaged, but I chose to break off that engagement. Mm -hmm. So no home now, no potential mate. Um, my, everyone in my elder generation had passed away. Wow. Very quickly, like three within 12 days. Oh my God. So, so I was helping to caretake them. And so that elder generation's gone. So, and then my children, my grown children didn't live anywhere near me. They had moved, you know, far distances mm-hmm. and, and I had my work, but I knew there was more. So I was looking at all these aspects going, wow, well, maybe I can see why I'm a little frustrated. Like you could look at these things as negative experiences. Right. And, um, yeah, like I loved that home and I don't own it anymore. I loved that man. I don't have that anymore. And, and, and then there was this pivot and I pivoted into a totally different perspective. I looked at it. 
elder generation, all past. And I felt freedom. No home, freedom, no relationship. Children are grown and thriving and creating their own lives, freedom. Like I was just like overwhelmed with this. I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? And I hear, you have no ties. Get rid of everything you own and, and just be free. Just get mm. on the road. And, and so I did. And I am the biggest homebody. My home is just everything <laughs> to me. And my oldest son called me like 15 minutes later and he goes, hey, what's new, mom? And I'm like, well, I'm getting rid of everything I own. And if there's anything you want, and I'm getting on the road. Oh my God. And, and so I told all my clients, I, you know, said, if you would love, you know, we're going to be working together. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to work with me in person, I'll come, you know, just give me a place to stay. Yeah. And so I, for three and a half years, I, what? I zigzagged across (laughs) the country and a little bit in Europe. And I, I learned to how to live fully in surrender because I wouldn't know sometimes two weeks out where I was going to be staying. And, and so I, and I, I had to face that, right. Cause I don't live in fear anymore. Of course we all have levels of fear still, but you know, I'm conscious about not living in fear. And I figured, well, what's the worst that can happen? I stay in an Airbnb, you know, if I don't have a place to be, but I always did. I always had like two or three options. And so I would just feel into, and I would always say, where can I be of most service? Mm. Where can my work expand the most? And that's where I'm going. I'm not worrying about how maybe I feel about it. You know, I'm, I'm just trusting. And after the first year, did a little check-in and I heard surrender more. You just got to surrender more. And so I went through this process over this three-year period of just surrendering and surrendering. And and the, my first stop, my client, we're sitting together and, you know, typically we'd be over a Zoom call, right? So now I'm physically with her for a month. And I'm saying, wow, you know, what I'd love to do is I would love to take you to that place I go when I do the meta work. Wow. So she said, well, then take me there. And again, there was this, okay, I'm not going to fear it. I'm just going to trust it. I'm just going to surrender. And we went there. She was able to step into this place of herself and her, what would would be her brand, right? And it was this beautiful, mystical, like dreamlike um, experience. It was really lovely. And when it was done, she said, okay, that was awesome, but I don't know how that correlates to my marketing or branding. And I said, oh, I do. That is all the visuals and your visuals are going to carry that energy, that frequency of who you are. And, and so of course the perfect photographer stepped into place. And, and, and so from that point, I realized, okay, this is, this is a thing. And so the more I was doing that with clients and, and stepping into these experiences over and over again with them, and then continuing on to do, you know, the marketing and everything, I realized that there needed to be something tangible in physical form because we're, we're in different dimensions. So something needs to be in this physical dimension. Right. Sure. So because I'm an artist it was a natural thing for me to just, you know, get a canvas and some paintings. And first, during these, these sessions with my clients, I would do the painting. But then I realized it's their essence. They need to be doing the painting, yeah. right? So that kind of evolved. And, and what would happen is if I was working with, say, six people with an organization, with these, um, I call them trips in you know, to this mm-hmm. essence point or what I call their creation point. Um, it, it, we'd be going in for say an hour or so, and then there'd be this painting and just feel free to keep adding to the painting. But then when we were done, they would each take a piece of that painting with them because it, it became a portal for them to very easily visually get back to that, that space. Yeah. 
Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's just, it's, and and none of it, none of it could have happened if I was in fear or in not in surrender, you know, because, um, because I could have rationalized it all away. I could have just said, well, that's just crazy. (laughs) And so it's evolved. And, and I had a client say to me, um, I've had this experience. It's, you know, whatever it was for her. And she said, I, I would really love to bring this to the hundreds of employees that I have. How can, how can I do this in some way? And so together we came up with this, um, what I call the imagination station, where we created, we retrofitted a room in their business, floor to ceiling canvases, and they just stand in the threshold of the room and there's a, there's a word on the wall, maybe it's abundance. And so, you know, the, the individual doesn't have to have a meditation practice or an understanding of anything um, spiritual or esoteric, but they could just look at that word and say to themselves, well, how does abundance feel to me? Where do I feel it in my body? Just spend a few minutes feeling into that. And then you've got a room full of, you know, 400 square feet of canvas, just wow. paint, just paint what that feels like. So these employees are able to basically channel abundance could be from the level of this is just a great release to, to really, you know, feeling into it, realizing that this is a tremendous HR tool. Absolutely. Because people can, I've, I've had people leave the space after just 15 minutes going, I was able to think, because you're able to use different parts of your brain, right? I was able to think through a solution that I needed to resolve without actually thinking about it. Just by releasing and painting, there was that opening for that to come in. So, um, and then when these paintings are deemed, you know, finished, because you kind of layer on top of each other, sure. they'll they'll be hung different places in the business and they can continue to emanate abundance. And then we can move on to the next thing. And wow. I've, I've just, be, I've just, I've just continued to show up and people have continued to show up that says, I get that. And I want that. And I see value in it. So the latest has been these individual paintings. But these are, <clears throat> excuse me, these are yours. These are your paintings that you did. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Um, so many things. Where to begin? First off, I can totally relate to your story. I did the same thing. It's hysterical for me. Yeah, it's like, parallel you know I think I I'm you know moved about maybe oh let's see if I had to do a quick count it would probably be maybe 10 places in 10 years kind of a thing like and all kinds of experiences but the first move was excuse me from Long Island to Arizona And I had no idea where I was going. I didn't know a soul, had no idea why I was going other than the voice, the voice that said, do this. And through contrast, as you said earlier, right, we, um, I, I just, you know, was able to determine exactly where I was meant to be. And then it was like the universe just laid itself at my feet. But I also knew it was temporary. And then that was temporary. And that was temporary. And that was temporary. And I also have grown children, obviously, who during that time were quite concerned, right? Um, I had left my marriage of almost 30 years. And like, who is this woman? Like, where did she come from? Right? And I knew 
my job was to continue to open those lines of communication with my higher self, my higher she, and do what I was led to do, even though I couldn't understand it in a logical way. It was all about the experiences that I was meant to experience that brought me here today, doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't be right. here otherwise. Right. And there is something, you know, a lot of people talk about those, um, the dark night of the soul. The dark night of the soul is temporary. The journey that comes from it is not. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That is so true. <laughs> right? So you know true. you're going to get through that dark night of the soul. But there is a journey that is going to unfold from that dark night of the soul that really is going to call you up. It's going to call you to yourself. That dark night is not the end. <laughs> it's the beginning. Oh, it's the beginning absolutely. Of you claiming you. And I'm marveling at your story. I'm marveling at all the elevation of the consciousness that you bring wherever you are in what you're doing and that you're doing it also in a very physical way. It's manifesting um, through these portals like the ones behind you where people are experiencing the elevation and vibrational frequency and that it's, it's not just a capability that they have, it's actually innate within them. What an incredible opportunity you're providing. And obviously the message is one that is, I'm sure leaving these businesses thriving as yours is. And that's when you know that you're in tune with the universe because the flow is in the giving and the receiving, the giving and the receiving, the giving and the receiving. And it is a blessing to all those who are in, are in touch. Absolutely. I think that's so beautifully said because yeah. that is exactly how it occurs. You know, that, that dark night is absolutely a pivoting point. And, yeah. and of course, you know, every day's a choice and every moment's a choice. And when we continually show up and say, well, my, my saying to myself is always, okay, life, bring it on. Yeah. You know, like, let's just, okay, I'm, I'm here to play. Let's, let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I think I said it early on in the conversation. I never actually knew that I could experience life so full of joy and so vibrant and so much more alive by, um, you know, I've always been um, a very transparent person, very, um, very open, how I feel very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And to, to understand over the decades that, that that vulnerability is our power and to, to be open and to be able to surrender and um, it, it just, life meets us there. I always would say to my kids as I was raising them, life has your back. Yeah. And when I got rid of everything and got in my little 300,000 um, mile car, <laughs> that everybody said, that car can't make it out west. Um, I, I understood it's something that I believed and I taught my children, I was really going to live it now. And, and the amazing, and I know you can speak to them too, the, the amazing experiences. Like I was house sitting in a beautiful cabin in the, in the um, worst part of New Hampshire winter, up uh, 70 acres up a, of a, a mountain dirt road in my little car that, you know, no all wheel drive or anything. And it was beautiful. I woke up in the morning and there was like another foot and a half of snow. And it's of course glistening because it's like below zero. And I look out and it's so peaceful. And I thought, ah, oh, thank you life. This is so beautiful. And you know what? 
I think I'd also like to experience the beach. And literally 45 minutes later, a client slash dear friend, because my clients become my dear friends, yeah. calls me and she said, honey, I just got the biggest business opportunity in Europe. Is there any way you could house it for me? My <laughs> condo three blocks from the beach in Santa Monica. And I'm like, check. <laughs> like that, that happens because we surrender into that happening. Right. So there, I mean, there's so many stories like that. And there's so many, um, you know, even just like right now, I was saying just a matter of months ago, as I'm doing these paintings, I didn't think that there, I could hold this much joy. Just oh. so to have these, this energy come through me to have, you know, it actually embedded on canvas in the medium of the paint. It, it's, it's profound to me and I'm the one doing it, you know, yeah. it doesn't get old. And, and I think that that's also when you know that you're in tune with spirit, uh, when we are constantly in awe of it working through us. Uh, right. I've been in this work. I mean, you might not believe it because I know I look like a teenager, but I've been in this work <laughs> for over 45 years. And there is not a day that goes by that I am not in awe of how spirit works. Absolutely. That higher consciousness of love, how light works through us, um, how we are constantly given these opportunities and um, the many portals that open up for us and invite us forward, but it's okay if you don't go and you want to do something else. And it's just the convergence of the energy and what that is like to live in that is a freedom and joy that you cannot begin to describe, but your paintings do. Mm. Thank you. You're right. It is something indescribable. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's honestly what I love about the paintings, because we, we don't have to put words around it, we can just yeah. take it in, you know, we can yeah. just, just look at the beauty of it and, and drink it in that way. So, oh. yeah. So beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm just so, I'm feeling so grateful, number one, that <clears throat> I allowed myself to listen and say, hold it, <laughs> hold it. <laughs> What's she all about? And um, yeah, and just to discover you and discover what you're doing and be able to share you with the world. Um, it's really my joy. And I know that there are so many who are listening to this who maybe have been challenged themselves, right? Those kinds of urgings. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And, you know, being urged to step out of the confines of the conditioning that we have received as children, particularly, you know, for women who we should be, what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, you know, all of those things. And to really just step out of that takes a great amount of courage, but the rewards are nothing that you can even imagine. Because in the space of the confines, you can't imagine that. And the creativity that you so beautifully express cannot be expressed because it's going to hit a wall. The vibrational frequency of that creativity is so high. You're talking etherical, right? So right. you're connected with consciousness itself. Consciousness cannot be in a box, just can't be. Right. So for all of those who are watching and listening, um, I know it can be a challenge and I know there are going to be so many parts of you that are going to fight it and say, oh, this or that. I know for myself, you know, I remember, um, you know, trying to make an arrangement with God. <laughs> Don't make me do this. <laughs> 
Really? Yeah. Like, haven't I given enough? Really? <laughs> um, let's make a deal. <laughs> can, we, can we do a smaller version? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the truth of the matter is, you know, the that joy just keeps saying, how about a little more? How about a little more? How much, how much joy can you handle? You know, it's, it's, that's an interesting question, right? That's my next, I think, uh, lane to, to explore. Yeah. I, um, that's why on, I have two websites and that's why on both of them, mm -hmm. it's a woman that is jumping off of the earth because it is a constant act of leaping and just, just, you know, when people have said to me many times, you're so brave. And I, I get that concept that a person would think that, but when it's coming from that internal, like soul level within you, it's like, there would be nothing else to do. Like yeah. there's not a, there's not a option B. No. And so, so it doesn't require, it isn't really bravery, right? Yeah. It's just continuing to leap and, and that leaping never ends. It just right. never ends. I, you know, because of COVID, I, I was hearing actually months before COVID hit that, that my time of traveling around um, in my little car needed to start to come to an end. It was mm -hmm. right when I started painting. So now it's like a logical thing. Oh yeah, I need a studio, right? Sure. Can't be putting every large canvases in the back of a car. But, um, but I was starting to feel this inkling, like it was time to ground it in. And, and so like that was in the fall and then COVID happened in the spring. And, and, and I just was sensing into that and feeling like, well, I don't, I don't want to be tied down with a mortgage. I don't want to, I just, I just desire, you know, a space, a small space. Yeah. And, and as life has it, I'm building a small space on my daughter and son-in-law's property, which oh is God. absolutely perfection. But here's what I did. I mean, that's all like everything else, right? Just like beautifully in place. But I got in my head, okay, by July 15th, I'm going to have a contractor and I'm going to have a contract signed. And that wasn't happening and wasn't happening. And, and then I remembered, oh, right. <laughs> I don't organize these things, right? Like I live in surrender. Like I'm not going to stop, <laughs> Yeah, you know? And so I have been stepping through that, mm -hmm. through this trust of, okay, the next perfect thing is going to happen, which it is. Yeah. And right now, you know, it's being framed in and, and almost under a roof. And so it's, um, it, it doesn't end. You can't, you don't go back. You, you know, yeah. you don't take a leap and then, oh, hold on. Let me back up a little bit. Right you continue to leap. Yeah. And, and you might try, you might try to go back and you think, Oh, I, you know, let me just rest. But what I found anyway, and for the people that I work with, I think they've experienced the same. And that is that, you know, you get there um, and you think, okay, I'll go back just a little bit, but it's so uncomfortable. You can't bear it. You yeah. have to leap forward again and you have to let go of what, whatever that draw was to um, to deceive you into believing that that's where you're going to feel safe and secure. Let it go. And just once again, we come forward. Yeah. And we take the leap of faith that very quickly turns into the knowingness where faith isn't even necessary. Beautifully said. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes we, yeah, we still need reminded of it and yep. it, it, it actually becomes humorous. It was like, oh yeah, who was I to think? <laughs> How silly. My, yeah. I just want you to know, I have a little cat that's trying very hard to jump on me. And oh, that's why up. that's yeah. my, my camera's moving come around on. a little bit. Yeah. I'm afraid he'll like move my, knock my mic over mm. too. But anyways, he, he must be liking our conversation. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's his name? His name is Dixon. He's Hi he's, Dixon. He could be a little, you know, mischievous. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. well, Leanne, it's been such a pleasure to have you here. I'm I'm really so grateful and so thrilled and I love everything you're doing and I can't wait to just hear more about it and 
you know, keep in touch. And um, how can people find you first off? Yes. And so there's, there's two websites. The branding and marketing website is creative one marketing.com. And that one is spelled out. So creative O N E marketing.com. Mm -hmm. And then the name Lee Ann Heltzel, H E L T Z E L.com also has some additional information. Fantastic. And um, are you open to people contacting you directly? Is there an email that they can reach you? Absolutely. I would love to talk with whomever's interested. It would be Lee Ann, L E E A N N, mm -hmm. at creative one marketing.com. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Sending you so much love and loving all the light that's all around you. Oh, thank you yeah. so much, Marcy. This has been such a joy. Oh, it really has. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for all of our audience, of course, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart that you have chosen to give us your time, your energy, your attention, and your hearts. And I'm confident that you have been blessed during this session. Um, please share it with your friends, your family, share it with your enemies. Right. And right. Um, my mother always used to say, kill them with kindness. <laughs> <laughs> so just um, thank you for being here. And I look forward to the next time. Of course, this has been Heart Shift Radio and the High Vibe Tribe. And we are here in support, love and blessings of you. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so very much. Bye bye. <laughs>